I, I will I will talk about uh, I will talk about uh, some of the transformations of the struggles about the commons that are taking place taking place in Italy, and in particular, I am I'm like I, I would like to talk about uh, what is happening in a specific area, which is the protection of the rights of future generations, uh, which is part of the fundamental um, epistemology of the commons. Uh, as we know, the commons are defined in a variety of way. In Italy, we reached the definition of the commons back in 2007 with the famous attempt of the so-called Rodotà Commission. Uh, within the definition of the commons, there is the idea that uh, resources that are part of the commons and are recognized part of the commons are to be run outside of the logic of the market and within the interest of future generations. Uh, this point is extremely important because it introduces in the theoretical dimension of the commons the notion of the long term and of future generation which is a notion that is defeated by the current organization of law and politics. Law and politics tend to introduce a dimension of the here and now. Uh, the judge decides the case between a plaintiff and the defendant, and either the plaintiff is right or the defendant is right, but there is never the interest of future generation that is considered within that conflict. It's a conflict between subje subjects that are here and now and have standing in a court of law. This has been the long legal tradition everywhere. In, from the political perspective also, the short term dominates today quite a bit. Politicians are always busy in considering the current emergencies. Our, their agenda is more and more determined by the uh, polls that are taking care, that, that are happening practically every month for knowing who is the politician who is better um, uh, appreciated by his constituency and also they are determined by the electoral cycle and the electoral cycle is short it can be as short as two years like in the united states for the congress or as long as five years like in other countries for the election of parliament but we're talking still of a dimension that we, that is extremely short to this one must add another point which is very important in understanding what I would call the short termism of our current state of affairs, which is the fact that the political authority, as it has been said many, many times, is today captured more and more by private organized business. And private organized business is actually determined by extremely short concerns. Uh, by three months, by three months, even less. And in financial capitalism, where things are moving right now and are moving very fast, the value of companies is determined by choices that have to do with the matter of minutes. So every CEO is actually more concerned about the current than about the future. And in capturing the political process, the short-termism of the business cycles is actually reflected into the political process. So the question is, the commons with their long-term dimension are actually at odds with all of this. The commons are organized around community, and community is not only a community of those that live here now, but the community is a process. A community is a process of, and is, must be to be an ecological community, not to be a identitarian, communitarian community. An ecological community is porous, 
in the sense that it connects with other community, but is also made of individuals that are not yet part of that community and will become part of those community in the future. Okay, so the future generations are intimate part of the idea of the commons. This is always very important. This is why we say all the time that the, co the commons are not just a topic, but the commons are a vision. The commons is not just one of the topics that the political agenda has to consider, but they are a global general vision that actually has to capture everybody who is active politically. Okay. So in front of this, there is an issue of how you make work in practice those ideas. How are you going to introduce the commons and the idea of future generations within these short-term restrictions? As you guys know very well, there have been a variety of cases happening in the last few years in which future generations try to be subjectivized in courts of law. Uh, the most famous case is, of course, the Urgenda case in Holland, and it is about climate change. But similar cases have been carried on also in the United States, in particular in the West Coast, in trying to make young teenagers representatives of the future of those people that 35, 40 years from now are going to be the ones that are affected by the crazy policy of the current short-termism, okay? So the courts of law are starting to become a place in which the rights of future generations struggle to have recognition. I believe this is an extremely important point because uh, the commons make us exit from the very positivistic vision of the law as something separated from the political process but the law is actually one of the ways in which the political process works. So we can obtain transformative result in politics, both by acting directly within the political process, but also by acting through the legal system, which is a decentralized political process. The civil plaintiff is someone that basically acts as a citizen, for changing the law, for challenging the status quo, for making issues that right now are not recognized become apparent, okay? So the civil plaintiff, as my co-author Lauren Nader says all the time, is really the hero of our generation. Is the guy who actually catches, uh, who, who actually gets him, himself burdened by an action whose results many times are not going to be enjoyed by himself, but I'm go are going to be enjoyed by those that will come later. And many, many areas of the law have transformed themselves because of the courage of civil plaintiffs. Imagine things like, you know, anti-discrimination law, the example of Rosa Parks in the United States would be very famous, but also most of the environmental law and of consumer protection law went through very famous civil cases that actually were able to make certain kind of interests emerge, okay? So it is very important in order to do this, to recognize what are the long-term dangers and the long-term issues that actually have to be tackled and have to worry us. And on these long-term issues and worries, we have to try to find legal principles and norms that can be used today in order to affect the result in the long term. Uh, the rights of future generations, this is very important, are today's duties of current generations. So in acting for future generations, we have to act now with an eye to the future. And this is why this is so important in the current phase in which we know that we are in a very dangerous moment. Okay, so in Italy, what we have been doing in these last few years has been to recognize that um, uh, electronic pollution is going to become a very, very serious issue. It's already a serious issue today, will be an exceedingly serious issue tomorrow with the transformation and the transfer of capitalism from the material world to the platform. 
And the current situation of the, the pandemic is actually showing that very clearly. Most and many, many activities that used to be carried on in the physical domain, including this current conference, are now carried on in the platform. And the platform is based on the internet. The internet is transferred through technologies that are extremely polluting, not only from the point of view of ordinary pollution, energy consumption, and so on and so forth, but especially through the so-called pollution, the, 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 the so-called um, electronic pollution, okay? Um, in these last few years in Italy, a number of, of groups has been particularly worried about the five, by the 5G technology and by the fact that this 5G technology will be carried on through an extremely detailed and short uh, knitted network of antennas that are going to make practically every square inch of the world polluted, electronically polluted. And therefore, we need to do something about that. And this something is not just to try to become Luddites and to be scared of every kind of possible evolution, but we need to understand that there are certain particular areas that need to be protected to the full extent of the law against uh, electronic pollution. And these areas are especially, because of recent acquisitions of, um, of, of science, areas in which young human beings are growing. We need to work out areas that are run as commons, in which the young puppet of the human species can grow up safe from the long-term impact of electronic pollution. Because a lot of what is happening in organisms that are in their growing stage because and that are exposed for long hours to uh, electronic pollution are actually unknown or are known to be quite dangerous by quite a number of scientists, okay? So the question is, can we actually work out some sort of areas that are protected ecologically as commons and in which the, ecolo the technological transformation at the, at the doors of which the technological transformation must stop. We don't want, of course, to win a battle against every kind of, uh, of, uh, of, of electronic pollution and of technological transformation in telecommunication. That is the domain of political struggle. It's not something you can obtain through the law, but through the law, you can obtain certain results that are actually quite important, okay? And so, as uh, uh, Rodota Committee, Future Generation, which is uh, the political organization that has the, the, one of the political organizations that is trying to create in Italy a network of the commons. Uh, we have been, we launched a call for situations in which we could actually do a strategic litigation on the domain of, uh, uh, of electronic pollution. And we have been able to locate in July a school nearby Torino, in which a number of uh, a very huge structure for antenna has been placed right in the middle of the school by a private public consortium in which uh, big organizations like Facebook or Google or Sister System participate with the local governments of Turin and of its area in order to develop technology of uh, wireless transformation, uh, wireless transfer of data, okay? And that has been introduced right within the school. Some parents were very scared and therefore we started a, an action, a civil action in order to enjoin that kind of structure to try to take it away from there. What is new here is that there, there are two couple of new things here in this litigation for future generations. 
First of all, we have also the children. The children are the main plaintiffs, but not only the children. Plaintiff is also, and this is very important, a special cooperative uh, company that was created two years ago in order to introduce cooperation between the present and the future generations. Okay, this company that was born in March 2019 has in its bylaws that the, the purpose of its economic activity is to create an economy that includes the benefit of future generation in cooperation with the current generations. And within the bylaws, there is written that civil action is one of the ways in which this company will carry on its own activity in order to create an environment that is favorable to actually carrying on, carrying on its own activity. And so we sued through that company in the interest of future generation, claiming that we needed to have in court of law, in this special litigation, an attorney for future generation to participate. The conflict is not just between the parents and the companies that are actually polluting, but the conflict is also a conflict in the interest of future generations, and the future generations must have an attorney present throughout the process in the litigation in order always to remind to the judge that whatever he is deciding cannot be just decided with the interest of the present, but must be decided in, with the interest of the very far future. So we have created, as you can see, so we sued and the court of law in Torino, despite the objections of defendants, lawyers, have actually accepted that the cooperative for the future generation has standing and that an, an attorney for future generation can stay in court. And this actually, I served as that attorney. I'm also an attorney and so I participate in that litigation together with the other attorneys, always only pointing at the very special issues on organisms that are growing of that particular kind of impact. Okay, so the idea is we safeguard areas, for example, for endangered species to reproduce and to mate, and those areas are protected. We need to have areas that are protected areas through the law by very strong and serious institutions, such as civil law servitude, in which the cubs of the human species can actually grow safe from the worst part parts of pollution. This is very, very important principle that could actually be expanded well beyond Italy and could be adapted to the needs of litigation for the commons also elsewhere. There was kind of a lot of interest, for example, in particular from the French. The French TV did a couple of, uh, uh, of uh, um, little news about this special litigation exactly because it is so new. On the one hand, it actually was the first time in which an attorney for future generation is in a court of law in Europe, recognized as such. From the other point of view is the first case in the interest of future generations that is not carried on against the government like Urgenda, but is carried on directly against some big corporations that are connected with each other within, within a consortium, okay? And therefore, it is a case that goes at the heart of the current moment of transformation of capitalism that is migrating from, you know, the uh, ordinary material life to the platform frontier. Uh, the first sorry, instance, Matthew. of course, Yes. Excuse me, but uh, I'm sorry to urge you, but it's, it is time for conclusion. Okay. We I don't just have 30 minutes for each participant. I sorry. just give you two minutes. So in the first case, Excuse in the first degree, we lost, but we obtained the recognition of, jur of jurisdiction. In appeal, but, but, but the judge of the first instance gave an extremely severe 
condemnation to expenses against the parents and against the future generation. Some seventeen thousand dollars euros of uh, uh, just 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 to be paid. But that has triggered a very interesting uh, and generous uh, uh, crowdfunding, so that a lot of money have been generated to create a very special fund for litigation in the future of future uh, of future generation that is now organized in Italy and with which we are carried on this case and similar cases in the future. This case is now going to the European Court of Human Rights. We are right now discussing and organizing the, um, the case because we have, ex we have exhausted the local remedies, but we will have the future generations in the court in the European Court of Human Rights, and it will be a quite interesting case to see. And as you will see, two different institutions of the Commons, the Attorney for Future Generations on the one hand, and the Special Fund for Litigation in the Instead of Future Generation were born from the bottom up just by tackling a local case with some global and general uh, consequences. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that the fact they spoke in English was not too much of a turn off. Thank you.